Hello, welcome to another session of Business Data Science with Delali. And today we are going to actually talk about a very important topic. Okay, of course, uh, in the past videos we've actually talked about experimentation in business. You know ways to ensure that your experiment is valid. Uh, you know we've talked about some statistical concept and all of that. But ultimately, today. I would like us to think about this question. How will you know that your business experiment is successful? Okay? Like, what do you look at to actually say that, oh yeah, we've actually run a successful business experiment. So today I'm going to give you five ways or call it five pointers for you to check or for you to think about to ensure that, uh, you know, your business experiment is successful or five ways or five things to check uh, to define the success of your business experiment okay number one it all starts with what a clear business goal okay so ultimately we want to make sure that the experiment is answering the business question that is set to answer okay that's number one okay what is the original business question of the experiment okay now in every experiment we start by stating a clear hypothesis right making sure that you know we clearly understand the metric of success so what is the primary metric that we are we are using uh, to determine you know the effect of the experiment okay and also of course what we call business decision framework this also needs to be discussed before the experiment. So what I mean by business decision framework is, what will we do if the conclusion of the experiment is this versus that? So for example, if you reject the hypothesis, what we call the non-hypothesis of the experiment, what decision will you do? Versus if you fail to reject, which means that you know your, your, your assumption or what, what we call the non-hypothesis, is true what will you do right ultimately you have defined all of these things before the experiment and so once the experiment is run and you have your result you just have to make sure that the experiment is answering the business question that's the ultimate thing to check to ensure that the experiment is successful so that's number one okay now number two is the statistical rigor okay what is the statistical rigor of the experiment so what do i mean by statistical rigor in in an experimentation so number one how was your sample selected did you select your sample correctly is it random okay what are the random effects uh you know how did you actually assign your 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 your, your, your you know the members of the experiment was the assignment of of, of, of elements or units or subjects into the experiment was it randomized enough or was there some bias okay is there any bias issue okay so you know what is the power of the experiment relative to the sample uh, that you actually experimented on okay so those are some of the things that i call statistical rigor okay uh, when you are you know reading the experiment was the experiment statistically significant please don't overuse this one by the way but like what is the p-value of the experiment right what is the practical significance versus the statistical significance of the experiment of course sometimes practical significance is different from you know statistical significance so you know one of the ways that you can tell that your experiment is successful is to ensure that truly there is statistical rigor in sample selection, in bias detection, uh, in random assignment, uh, and is in, in, in the conclusion of the experiment based on you know the statistical significance, which all leads to like the power of the test. Okay, so that's number two. Number three thing to consider when trying to define whether or not your experiment is successful is what I call analyzing secondary or guardrail metrics okay check for secondary 
and gradual metrics so every time we are running an experiment we have the primary metric so let's say you know it's a marketing experiment and we want to drive conversion okay so conversion in that case conversion rate becomes you know our primary metric but then there are secondary me- metric like customer satisfaction could be a secondary metric or you know latency of the website uh, for which you had you know you, are, you want to drive the con- conversion for okay could be uh, you know a guardrail metric so the idea here is that if your experiment is showing a statistically significant improvement for the metric we are testing so let's say you know you test two variants of like uh, images to display on a website images of a product to display on a website and truly one of them is increasing conversion of course you can say that somehow your experiment is successful because your goal is to determine which of this product will drive higher conversion and you've seen that one product drive truly a higher conversion but you also have to analyze what we call guardrail metrics so is that product placement and all the things that has led us to be able to place that product there is it causing latency you know is load time now slow because of that so those are some of the things we call guardrail metrics you want to ensure that your experiment is not uh, hurting any other important metric. Or, for example, you know, do you did you have a, a you know a very statistically significant uh, conclusion, but customer satisfaction is very poor? Did you implement a product that is driving conversion but leading to a lot of support volume because people are confused and so they are reaching out to your support center? Maybe that's not good enough, right? So. That's the third thing to consider. Analyze the guardrail metrics to ensure that the experiment that you have run that has given you a statistically uh, significant, uh, you know, result that is favorable, uh, you know, to you, is also not hurting any, uh, you know, important metrics like customer promo, uh, you know, net promotion score or you know things like increasing support volume or you know making load time very slow and all of that right so that's number three okay number four you need to really consider the learning aspect of the experiment okay so emphasize the learning aspect of the experiment because when you run an experiment ultimately you want to understand consumer behavior or you want to understand a particular phenomenon okay you don't always have to get the conclusion that you are hoping to get, right? So even a negative in quote, a negative experiment, uh, it really unlocks a lot of learning. Okay, so it, it it lets you really learn more about you know the customer behavior or you know the behavior of or the performance of a particular medicine or you know a marketing offer, whatever it is. So even if the conclusion uh, you know is different from what you expect it's actually a successful discovery of what doesn't work okay and so you need to really emphasize the learning aspect of an experiment so an experiment is really successful if it helps you learn about the customer or the phenomenon or the concept that you are trying uh, you know to experiment on okay so it's not only about you know getting a statistically significant conclusion no it's it's not only about that but rather the learning aspect of uh you know of the of, of the phenomenon or the experiment okay so it's important that the ultimate uh, goal of of an experiment is to actually to learn to learn and then use those insights to make decisions okay so make sure that the learning aspect is also emphasized okay so so that's number four and finally number five is tie everything back to the business decision remember i started number one from what business decision and then i'm ending also with what business decision because ultimately everything we do in experimentation is to allow us uh, you know make confident business decisions so the ultimate goal of experimentation is to enable confident decision making to improve business okay and so 
for you to determine or for you to define whether or not an experiment is successful okay one of the important factors even though i'm giving the answer number five is to ensure that you know ultimately this is helping us to make more confident business decisions okay so today i have shared with you five considerations okay to ensure that your business experiment is successful or five ways to evaluate uh, a business experiment to determine whether or not it's successful number one is starting with a clear business goal and making sure that your experiment is ultimately answering the business goal that it was set to answer that's number one number two statistical rigor okay we talked about that how did you select your sample how did you set your p values how did you uh, calculate the power of a test how did you do your random assignment how do you actually measure the outcome of the experiment so that's number two number three uh, we talked about understanding or evaluating gradual metrics to make sure that your experiment is not hurting an important metric okay gradual or secondary metrics we talk about that and then number four we talk about emphasizing the learning aspect of an experiment because ultimately an experiment is supposed to help us what learn so even if you don't get the conclusion you want experiment is successful if it helps you learn okay and then finally tying everything back to the decision making because experiment is supposed to help us make more confident business decisions I hope this is helpful and I will talk to you later.